Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The F-35 Lightning II, the fighter of the 21st century, is brimming with a state-of-the-art weapon system and sensor suite. Air-to-air -air missiles, like the AIM-120 AMRAAM. Precision-guided air-to-surface bombs, like the GBU-32 JDAM. and 25mm GAU-22 cannons create the ideal assortment for the F-35 to become the ultimate multi-role fighter. But the Gatling gun that comes into action during close air support exudes fierce firepower, smiting enemies and leaving no room for escape. While most of the fighters and attack aircraft from the U.S. Air Force Navy and Marine Corps were reaching their sundown, the F-35 Lightning II began its reign as a replacement for this aging fleet. The F-35A, the conventional takeoff and landing variant of the fighter, has its 25mm Gatling gun buried into the left wing root. When the F-35 backs up troops and provides close air support, the Gatling gun becomes the principal armament. Unlike a typical gun, the gun air unit of the F-35A inherits intricacy as it is integrated into the airframe without disturbing the stealth configuration. The gun underwent standalone testing and then shots were fired while the gun was mounted in the aircraft. When the trigger is engaged by the pilot, the gun door opens, revealing the gun barrel. In the meantime, the vent door opens, purging accumulated gun gas out of the chamber. As the Gatling gun is inoperative when the aircraft is on the ground, the test team had to bypass the safety built into the control logic for firing the gun on the ground. The rounds fired during the test were not real, but replicated a real-world firing scenario. With successful results from the ground gun tests, the test team fired the four-barrel gun in flight. The GAU-22A has an extreme firing rate of 3,300 shots per minute, and a four-second press on the trigger will empty the entire magazine of 182 rounds. During the test, the pilot fired one 30-round burst and two 60-round bursts. The GAU-22A is compatible with a multitude of ammunition, like armor-piercing high-explosive incendiary rounds and frangible armor-piercing rounds. After the test team pushed the gun to the limits during ground and flight tests, they took the gun for a spin in extreme temperatures to verify the correct operation in freezing weather. Despite the sophisticated armaments carried on board the Lightning II, the sensor suite of the F-35A is second to none. It offers enhanced situational awareness for the pilots while offering precise guidance on target acquisition. The electro-optical targeting system combines the forward-looking infrared camera and infrared search and track system into one unit. The new EOTS system is compact and offers precise air-to-air -air and air-to-ground targeting. The system is mounted onto the lower fuselage, and the sensors are covered with robust sapphire glass without disturbing the stealthy characteristics.
The images captured from the EOTS sensors are fed to the central fusion server, which is the memory of the fusion engine of the fighter. The fusion engine is a computer that undertakes image processing, sensor management, and tracking of the sensors. The fusion engine processes the data received from the sensors to create a holistic picture of the battle space. Thanks to the fused holistic picture, pilots gain unmatched situational awareness and the ability to make correct decisions. With the advent of data fusion, the F-35 expanded its capabilities. The helmet that we have and the, the ability to project information both day and night uh, in the helmet and be able to cue weapons and cue sensors with your helmet and have that displayed to you, it, it's a massive increase for situational awareness. So if you've seen Iron Man, then, then yes, it, it could be compared to that level of situational awareness. And I don't think of it as much of a helmet as it is part of the airplane because it's the way we interact with the airplane. An upgrade to certain areas of the fighter could reap the best of these newfound capabilities. The Joint Program Office, the organization responsible for developing and sustaining the F-35, is expecting a Block 4 upgrade for all of the F-35 birds. The Block 4 upgrade will pursue the formidability of the fighter through 2070 with an improved sensor suite, powerful data fusion, and enhanced interoperability with fourth generation fighters and other platforms. The JPO preluded the Block 4 upgrade with Technology Refresh 3. The TR3 improved the core processor and computer memory of the fighter, qualifying it for the upcoming Block 4 upgrade. Regardless of the beyond visual range firing technologies implemented into the F-35, the 25mm GAU-22A cannon makes the F-35 a formidable contender in close air support missions. Like all the other engagements, pilots undergo extensive strafing run training before taking part in real-world missions. Pilots engage in different types of targets in a training range. During a strafing run, as the fighter flies exceptionally close to the ground, pilots should be prepared to counter enemy threats coming from the ground. Unlike the F-35, fighters like the F-15E Strike Eagle are made for dual-role air-to-air and air-to-ground missions. With that said, Strike Eagle has more to offer during a low altitude mission, providing close air support for the ground troops. The low altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night system in the Strike Eagle incorporates a terrain following radar and a fixed infrared sensor. These create a map of the terrain ahead and depicts it on the pilot's heads up display. Additionally, the system has a forward-looking infrared sensor and a laser-designator rangefinder for delivering precision-guided bombs. The versatile AGP-70 multi-mode radar allows the F-15E pilots to freeze the air-to-ground radar picture while using the radar for scanning air-to-air -air threats. Like other fighters, the F-15E has its M61A1 Gatling gun internally mounted in the right wing route. The gun system carries 500 rounds in its vertical storage container and fires at a whopping rate of 4,000 to 6,000 shots per minute. This yeah. gun is still terrible today. Cause... No, like no, all the guns we did was... <laughs> A gun like the 30mm GAU-8A Avenger found on the A-10 Thunderbolt can create a recoil force of around 10,000 pounds. 
When firing a Gatling gun, the muzzle velocity is extremely high at 3,400 feet per second. With its extreme firing rate of 4,200 rounds per minute, a one second burst could fire nearly 70 rounds. Introducing a great deal of recoil force into the structure. As the gun is located at the aircraft's nose, a substantial vibration is transmitted to the cockpit. To minimize the effect of recoil, the Gatling gun is off-centered to the left. Apart from the significant contribution provided by the fixed-wing aircraft for close air support, the role played by the helicopters is indispensable. One such helicopter, the UH-1Y Huey, is considered a staple asset due to its firm firepower, endurance, and cost-effectiveness. The Huey sports a 7.62 mm GAU 17A Gatling gun in a kick-out mount along with other weapons. During the gun loading process, the linked ammunition is loaded directly into the ammunition storage. The ammunition storage feeds rounds to the delinking feeder via flexible ammunition feed chutes. Once delinked, the rounds are sent to the firing chamber. The GAU 17A Gatling gun is widely adopted at the door gunner's position in rotary wing applications. Door gunners on either side of the windows act as additional eyes, scanning the ground for potential targets. The primary function of the door gunners is to suppress enemies on the ground while supporting ground troops. Additionally, they communicate with pilots and convey vital information, thus improving their situational awareness. The gunner has to be agile in pointing the gun in the desired direction, as the pilot will have to maneuver the helicopter to circumvent enemy attacks coming from the ground. Door gunners remain tethered to the aircraft at all times. to face unprecedented altitudes. The M230 is yet another compelling 30 mm chain gun. This is fitted externally to the AH-64 Apache and fires at a rate of 625 rounds per minute. As the name suggests, the M230 chain gun utilizes a chain to feed ammo from the storage box to the firing chamber. The system can store 1,200 rounds of ammunition, and the gun receives power from an electric motor. Regardless of the continuous revamps in modern warfare on sensors, precision guided ammunition, and electronic attack measures, Guns add versatility and flexibility to any aircraft that is expecting to see warfare in the future. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.